C. Lindelof videos, AP calculus, particle motion. We have this function, this position function, x of t is equal to t to the fourth minus 6t squared minus 3. And we're asked to describe the behavior for time that's greater than 0 but less than 1. And then we're asked to describe that behavior as it, uh, it, with respect to direction and speed. So I think we can do this. First thing we're going to do is find some direction here. So to do that, I'm interested in the first derivative of position, which is velocity. And the velocity here is 3t cubed minus 12t, isn't it? And I want to know when that's, when that's equal to 0. So that's kind of the first thing that I want to do. Um, except for this should be, <laughs> I was like, what did I do wrong here? It should be 4t, shouldn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and factor this. You know what? Let me just keep moving for a second. At the same time that I do velocity, let me take, let me take the acceleration function. The acceleration function is the second derivative of position, the first derivative of velocity, and it is acceleration at any time t. In that case, we would get 12t squared, wouldn't we? Minus 12. And I want to know when the acceleration goes to 0, because I'm interested in that kind of weird stuff. So let me do some factoring here. And as I factor out the velocity function, I get 4t times t squared minus 3, right, is equal to 0. And we can see that velocity goes to 0. Velocity goes to 0 at t is equal to 0. So v of t is equal to 0 at t equals 0, t equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So this is interesting to me, the square root of 3. So there are some key things there. Acceleration goes to 0, so a of t equals 0 at t equals plus or minus 1. Isn't that true? So this is, I'm going to start just working on this. So here's my acceleration function. My acceleration function, I'm just going to look at that and see what this thing does. Right, acceleration only changes direction at plus or minus 1, but minus 1 is over here somewhere, and I don't care about it. Minus 1 is over there somewhere, and I don't care. So here's my t value. Here's my a of t value. And my a of t value is... My a of t value is 1 here. And look, everywhere from negative 1 to here, the... Uh, acceleration, not value, but the, the sign of acceleration is going to be the same. So I'm just going to take that. I'm going to actually evaluate a of one half acceleration at one half because that's somewhere in here, isn't it? <clears throat> and a at one half is negative. So what I can assume is everywhere from negative one to one, acceleration is negative. The value may change, but the acceleration is negative. So okay, that's that's easy enough to do. When I go back up to my velocity function, I want to do the same thing. And here it works out even better because we have we know that at time is zero, so this is t, this is v of t. At time is zero, velocity is zero. At time is square root of three over two, which is greater than one, right? Which is greater than one. So one is over here somewhere, isn't it? So I can evaluate that. I'm going to evaluate that at one half, and that is also negative. And because that's negative, you know what? I can evaluate it at one. And you know, let me evaluate it at 1, and I'm still going to be negative. It's negative everywhere from here to here. So what I can say is, given the velocity, the velocity is negative, so it's left, isn't it? The velocity is left. The acceleration is negative, so sine of v of t on the interval that we're looking at is, is less than 0. Sine of a of t is also less than zero. Signs match. Signs match. So we have speeding up. Speeding up. 
Remember that if the sign of velocity and the sign of acceleration match, you have increased speed. You have increased speed. So what can we say? Particle moving left and speeding up. And this is really important proof to have. All right? So I hope this has been really helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks.